Hi Jonathan, it's Charlotte Kincaid with East Coast Yacht Sales. Sorry that we missed each other yesterday. My listing photo shoot went a little over time frame and we were losing daylight. So here I am. Hopefully this video footage will be helpful for you. This is stock 13 right behind me. Our service department just let me know where she is. So we're actually here at my office in Yarmouth, Maine. And I'm gonna do a quick little walkthrough of this boat just for you guys. Let me know what other questions that you might have. Let's see if this boat is the right fit for you all. Uh, you're gonna see a real behind the scenes live version of this uh, unedited one take walkthrough of this very cool 22 Axa Park. Um, I'm just gonna be mindful that my dog doesn't go swimming in after any ducks. So I'm gonna leave the camera here, take the covers off, and show you behind the scenes. So it is an absolutely gorgeous day here. Wish I had y'all in person, but this is just a real world version of what we're working with in the fall here in Maine. We get these absolute gems. So I just popped those covers off. If it were me and I were going out right now, I might just take the console cover off and leave everything else covered up. Uh, that's just a little bit easier, but if you're gonna have all the folks on board, I wanted you also to see how cool this celestial blue cover color is. This is a new theme Brax Apart hot off the press. They're actually gonna change all the covers to this tonality instead of the bright Axe Apart red, which I think will be a big crowd pleaser. But stock 13 is powered with this black single 200 horsepower Mercury engine. I love these engines, by the way. I think the cowling design kind of matches the whole scheme of the Axe Apart. And I would never have one of these boats without the Skeeto bar, personally. Hi, am I on your way? No, oh, huh? Is that no, it's not. It does have a Merc. They they make one. They make one that does that. This is an Axopar. Okay, okay, that's the yeah, this is the baby version. Okay, is that a 20? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Smallest one that they make. Cool. It's cute, right? It's pretty cool. I love the Axe Apart. Yeah. I've known a couple of Oh, you have? Thought about upgrading. Hey, this boat's for sale. That's why I'm showing someone. Have fun. I know, right? See, Maine, it's full of great people. So I love this ski tow bar. I will probably never water ski, but I do like the fact that it's here for, um... oh, I think it's my friend. It is. Um, it's here for a good handhold boarding disembarking. Hey, Gretchen. Looking very fall over here, cuties. 
I think, yeah. Um, this is very charming. It looks good on you. Hi, Kenzie. So, it's a small town. Um, her husband actually runs the yard that commissions all of our outboard engines. So, uh, and I race with them on sailboats. So, welcome to the 22. They're going back. Easily distracted by beautiful boats and fun, nice people. So, love the 200 Mercury. I really like the ski tow bar. I don't water ski, but I think it's a really good handhold and like kind of safety mechanism. Uh, the 22 and the 25 are the first of the axle cars to not have an open transom. So we still have big, huge scuppers we'll take a peek at in a second. Uh, but this is kind of a little bit more enclosed. It would be great for us, like with the dog, being able to have the peace of mind of this. We have our freshwater wash down back here. This is a really cool kind of incognito feature. We have our fill back here for that as well. And you'll see underfoot, don't worry, I have white soled new sneakers on. Um, this is diamond non-skid, really easy to clean, really easy to keep tidy. And nice sizable swim platform back here for a 22 foot boat. This side has the integrated swim ladder in underneath this. So even if you hop out into the water, you can still deploy that while you're swimming in case you forgot. Have fun y'all. And so we're gonna step back here. We have the U-shape configuration. There is that pedestal mount right here in the center. And I think it's kind of fun. Like this is a very rugged uh, T-top. So I kind of just put my hand up here, step down. And there's a ton of storage back here. The more you're gonna go boating, the more you're gonna realize that you need some stuff with you occasionally. So looking back aft at this U-shape configuration, here we have where our battery switches live. And this is the two battery system. So we have service and start isolated in here. And we have our little sachet, which will have all your manuals in it. This is fuse panel behind here. Uh, manual emergency bilge pump connection is right in there. It's a whale diaphragm. You put this little rod in and go in case you ever lost battery power or anything like that. Probably will never use that, but it is a standard security feature that we're required to have. So at the Kincaid, there is no swimming over there. So this is what I'm talking about with the scuppers. If you look down here in the deck, see how it has like this um, channel and back in down through there, it goes wide open into the water. So when you go wa to wash this boat off, you don't have to worry about using those bilge pumps. Everything's gonna go run out safely out of the boat. Great safety feature. I'm really glad to see that we're upgrading um, these cushions. We have put our personal East Coast Yacht Sales uh, fenders on this boat for the time being, but my recommendation, I can send Amazon links for the fenders that I think fit better on the hull sides of these boats. Um, this is not my favorite fender. It's great if you were like um, on a lake, but I think in the ocean, you need a little bit more inflatable fender. I like the uh, Tailor made that have the straight through circles, and I like to put little fuzzy fleece covers on them that then I monogram with my boat name, you know, making it yours. So, really pretty aft deck. You can fit tons of people here. Mike on his boat, he said he's had 10 of his buddies on board. So, yeah, there's plenty of real estate, and he had them all sitting back here. His wife had all of her friends from work come. He said there was no problem like running and having all the weight back here. The boat still handled really, really well. So um, this is a ginormous storage locker. You're probably gonna get motion sick from me jostling around with my cell phone, so apologies. Um, we have the extra cushions that are not out right now back here. So this makes a sunbed insert. You put in the uh, table on the low leg and this whole thing turns into a very cushy aft deck situation. All the fusion sound systems come with two different color speaker covers. Um, do as you will, white or black. Uh, there's battery box down here, and it's a very easy configuration to change and make it work for you. I personally love the table, so I think it's great to have kind of alfresco dining, cheese crackers, cocktails with friends on board so and these deck latches actually lock if you were so inclined um 
personally, I never lock my boat, but everyone's a little different. Look how sharp that is. That is a good looking boat. Really cool. Um, so the thing I wanted to like let you know, I think this is a very transparent way to show a boat. You saw me take off the covers earlier. It does take a minute or so, and like you do have to scoot these helm seats forward in order for that console cover to really like fit properly around everything. The console cover is awesome because once you take everything off, it's like brandy new, fresh and clean down below everything. I'm very envious of that. Usually there's like obviously bird fecal matter whenever I get to my boat because I don't have a console cover at this moment. It blew off in a storm because it wasn't as nicely fitted as this one is. So, trials and tribulations of boating and having an open boat. I've actually stood here um, and there's this like midway bar, which this is like a really fun place. If you're out there going like wild and crazy with all your buddies underway, it's a fun place to have a grab hold. Um, we do have these little footsteps that make it easier to get on and off of the boat. And I think that this whole T-top situation is like the best T-top um, engineering that I've ever seen come out of Axopar. So you'll see this has got this huge long base up here. I think this engineering with all these welds are really attractive. They kind of match the lines of the boats. And then you see that it splits and it goes down to two kind of widespread spots. And those are out all the way on your hull side as opposed to just on the console, which gives you more real estate in the roof up here, which is fabric by the way, so you're not putting a ton of weight aloft which, you know, keeps the center of gravity low, keeps your ride really smooth. These helm seats are the new version from Axopar. Oh, little fender line here. Um, I think they're very sporty. They kind of feel like a sports car seat. They kind of curve to the ergonomics of your body. I am very short-waisted. Uh, just so you know, for the frame of reference, I'm 5'8", and about probably a buck 80 at this point. Sorry, COVID wasn't very, friendly to me, but for scale ability, um, I have like at least a foot over my head while I'm standing here at the console. I'll flip the camera around a little bit so you guys can get a better frame of reference. But we're gonna take a little look here. I sometimes sit right here with the bolster up. So because I'm so short-waisted, this tends to be like one of my favorite ways to ride. I'm in Maine and there's so many lobster buoys that a lot of the time I'm standing if I'm going at a quick rate of speed because I need to be able to see the 9,000 buoys that are gonna pop up in front of me. Um, I just got my nails done, so this might not go well. Um, there we go. So this has a Go 12 Simrad screen on here. So you got a 12-inch touch screen. And what's cool about this sound system is that it does extend right here to the console. So you've got like 360 degree sound happening. Uh, just like all the other Axopars, you have this very clean looking console set up. So these buttons are really nice. Uh, the only trouble I've ever had with these fancy buttons is if you pour a bucket of rum punch into them, they do get stuck. And if the horn is stuck down, your horn is stuck down. So um, they're easy to replace, but they're pretty, they're nice. Maybe don't pour a bucket of rum in it. Um, one of the biggest complaints people make about the Axopar is that the cup holders aren't big enough for us supersized <laughs> Americans. They have remedied that. So this is the latest and greatest in the cup holders. You can actually fit a Yeti in there. You have a waterproof USB right here. Um, if you were so inclined to add a VHF to the boat, you could add one here, take off your 9,000 safety stickers. You could add more screen. You could add a second screen here. You could add a VHF. You could do uh, whatever your heart desired because it would be your boat. But there is room here on the panel to add another bell and whistle to the vessel. Oh, look, there's a cool fish left. Um, so you have a port side helm here. You're kind of like in the center of the boat anyway. And on this outboard side to port, we have our trim tab control. This is an intuitive trim tab. So you just like tap and tap and you would just tap and tell the boat level out and tap again if you wanted to go down again. You can see there's like a little emoji of what the boat is doing here. Um, it's intuitive. So you do it, you feel it, you do it, you feel it. Um, you have your fusion hockey puck control is what I call this. It's really easy to Bluetooth link a phone to this. You just like press and hold the power button and it blinks and then it pops up as like BB100. And anyone can link their phone 
I'm linked to so many acts of fires that when I go through the mooring field up here, sometimes my phone will connect to a client's boat and then I have to be like, hey, sorry, there's my country music or my rap music or whatever I'm, NPR podcast I'm listening to. Ignition, standard mercury throttle. There are some buttons in here because it's a standard throttle display that aren't applicable, um, like transfer, because you only have one driving station on the boat. If you have like one of those dock master, like remote control your boat kind of things, you would be able to change where you're driving from. You don't need that. Dock is a limit to your RPM. It's kind of like training wheels for the boat. So if you're in a tight maneuvering situation, you are apprehensive about like whether or not you're gonna be jumpy on this throttle, uh, good to put into dock mode. We can talk more about that at an owner orientation, but pretty awesome setup here. You can um, like really feel kind of sports car-y while you're here. I mean, it's like very much a fun, fun boat to operate. A little chart plotter, accoutrement holder below. We give you the Navionics Plus chip card so you can do all the things you want to do with navigation. Um, grab bar right here. As you've probably seen in a couple other videos, this articulates. Uh, your windscreen can go up. If you're standing up, you kind of just leave it right where it is. Um, we have one of those boarding steps right here. This is really nice. Uh, and another pedestal base up here at the bow. Probably talking your ear off, but uh, we're gonna go up here. We don't have the cushion on for this forward setup right this second, but it's right in here. And this is your anchor locker. I just realized my phone case is showing on the side of this. Sorry guys. Um, so we have our anchor in here. It's galvanized, it's in this little like um, noodle feeling thing. I like these little keepers. They are good for holding your dock lines right where you want them. Here's your road. I think it's about 90 feet. You would tie the back end of it to this eye in here. This is a nice finished internal space. Really tidy. It does drain. So we like that. Easy to clean. And you'll see like all of these hatch tracks are nice and wide. These are easy to wipe out. Everything's really easy to kind of like keep tidy and neat. You have your navigation lights integrated up here and your really pretty cleats. Check those out. You're all branded. Uh, one thing I think is really cool as we go back, like this handrail that's here, the matte black I think is really attractive. You've got that with the console detailing and the T-top detailing. I think the black engine, like you saved some grand keeping that black and probably spend it on some more options. This is really comfy up here. I have totally sat on this seat underway and we have a little bolster, it's really nice. And then this little seat would normally have a cushion on it right here. Um, matchy matchy with the cushions, they're all that kind of slate blue gray situation. This is your head compartment. So awesome. So you've got the sizable gas strut, the first one we got I thought this was kind of undersized and since then they're constantly like making these better and better. They've really made this kind of a rock star option. Um, I have a 21 foot boat. It does not have a head and I am so envious of this. So uh, what I'm gonna do is put the camera down here or flip it around rather. Let's do that. Pause for the cause. All right, this is gonna be super dorky. Um, I hope you can see me as I do this, but this is me, hi, right here at the head. And what I'm gonna do is show you like how I would get in and down here. And we're talking about Saturday morning clothes. So um, there's a little integrated step. So all I'm doing is like backing into the head and it's pretty nice, like step in and down. And I never really like, sit, like to sit on the toilet in front of people, but hey. So I could reach up and I could close this, but you know, for the most part, no one can even tell that I'm in here. Uh, to my port side, up above, overhead, I have like this cute little LED light that's in here. I have the smart diagnostics. So if there is like a software update to do to your marine electronics, that's in here. I'll bring the camera in with me actually in a second. Um, you've got your fuse panel, you have your macerator overboard discharge button, and I have this cute freshwater sink here. Um, and below that, you have your labeled watertight hatches that show you your overboard discharge valves and everything. So actually, let me grab that camera and I can show you a close-up look. But you can see how easy this is. Like I'm just like step, step out of the head. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna step back in. 
this is pretty intimate to be with strangers on the internet on the head. <laughs> um, but here I am sitting right here in the center of the toity and over here to port is that very cute sink. I love this. Like I would totally like have my soap or something over here and it's nice and easy to clean and this flips down so it's out of the way. You could put like your cube, your brick of all your life jackets and stuff in here. There's plenty of room. Like up by my feet, there's still plenty of room. It's like surprisingly spacious in here. Um, behind me kind of reminds me of those shoe storage things that go on the back of your closet doors. But you could put like tons of stuff in here. I'm imagining some sunscreen because of us Scottishly colored people. We always need that. But over here, just below the sink, we have our buttons. These have a, another little set of icons on them that describe what they do. So one is like fill and flush, one is fill, and one is just, you know, empty the bowl. So really nice to have a freshwater head on a boat this size. This is that fuse panel up here. This is a European situation. Macerator, clippy, button, is the word switch is <laughs> right there and the light is overhead so it's a pretty nice little setup over here um while we're in the head this is very convenient i'm just gonna reach forward here and show you what's underneath this forward section so here is our power steering reservoir um this we probably never need to do anything with this but there is a good amount of space here as well in this forward locker I'm not sure I would store like blankets or anything in there because you know it's under the deck level um, and your waist pump outs in here as well. Um, but there's a good, there's way more storage space in this boat than I have in mine. So I'm gonna get up out of this head <laughs> um, and I'm just mindful not to knock my noggin as I'm walking out of here, but we're gonna close, it's almost like a falling door down here. That's really easy. Ta-da! So. Uh, this is the Axle Car 22. Thank you guys so much for checking this video out. Let me know if you guys want to do a live video walkthrough of this very cool boat. I hope this was informative and uh, let me know if this boat seems like it's a good fit for you guys. I would love to have her be yours. We can do an onboard orientation, do some dock practicing and do some you know, boat maneuvering training. The other thing I want to talk about when I love these engines, yeah, I'm totally obsessed with these new new engines from Mercury. They're so, so easy. Like, I'll probably never have to take the cowling cover off, but it has that depression door on the top of it where you check and fill your oil if you needed to fill your oil. But here on the side, we have another trim tilt just we have on our throttle, but this is where your fresh water rinse is. You don't have to do it like every time. If you were like a Mercury tech, they'd probably tell you to do it every time, but, I don't do it every time. Um, but it is such a cool looking engine. And I love that if you do wanna check your oil, if you don't have to take the whole cover off. And the angles of this, I just think are super sharp, literally, they're sharper. Um, it's a really co cool looking boat. But here, let's walk off, I'm gonna turn this around and you guys can see the hull sides. And then we'll say adieu for now. All right, one last little minute here. We're dock side, checking her out. This is just such a cool looking boat. It's like almost space age vibes. You have your little white all around up here on the top of the T-top. This boat is super safe. Um, what else can I tell you about her? Uh, I love how incognito you are with this new upgraded logo where it's like kind of inset into the hull sides. That to me is really cool. I mean, the boat's already like such a standout. I think having the branding be a little incognito is really nice um like literally we just took the plastic off of this it still has adhesive from they get uh shipped across the atlantic and they're wrapped 360 in shrink wrap with all this protective stuff on it so this boat is hot off the press for us and we do have that gray anti-fouling bottom paint look at how cool this bow is i mean negate my shadow here but like that is sharp um, the bottom paint is a product called Sea Jet. It's sprayed on, it's a hard self-polishing bottom paint. Uh, it's compatible with Pettit Vivid paint, so we just kind of do a four to one-ish ratio to match that gray. Technically, you can go multiple seasons. I like to touch up the waterline at least every year, so that way your boat looks so cool. People are looking at you, you wanna have a perfect looking clean at bottom. Um, the only thing I don't think I covered here 
is, oh, back here underneath the U-shaped storage, we do have a ton of space back here as well. So a great place to tuck in your fenders. Um, and you kind of like, they make that little six pack or something, I don't remember what, how many beers fit in that Yeti, but it does slide in there too. And then my Yeti backpack does a really nice job back here because you don't have a fridge on board, that's um, probably not necessary, but it's nice to be able to know that you can fit a cooler in certain places. Uh, Mike puts a Yeti, like the soft top flipper hopper thing right here underneath the two seats. So. This is stock 13 of our AXOPAR 22s here at East Coast Yacht Sales. Thank you guys so much for your time viewing this. Sophie says thank you very much for rolling with our timing as well. And let me know if you have any questions.